By now you've heard Alex Harmozy and 10,000 other people talk about school and how you can grow a community and make money. I think you said enough, man. Just leave it there. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> but most of the content out there is about how the platform works and how you can make money on the platform, not necessarily how you actually grow on the platform. So today I'm gonna give you 10 tips to grow your school community from complete scratch. To make things easier, I split this video up into three different categories. If you have no social media following, if you do have a social media following, and third, if you already have a school community, what you can do right now to make it better, continue to grow, and get better engagement inside of your community. So if you're completely starting from scratch and you have no social media following, the first thing I would do is find somebody that you can partner up with who does have a social media presence. I wouldn't aim for a large following or anybody that has a mega following because those people, I guarantee you have already been reached out and they get spammed enough every single day in the DMs. What you should do instead is find somebody who's got 10 to 100,000 followers, make sure that their community is active and engaged because there's plenty of people who buy followers, who buy likes. Just look in the comment section, see if there's actual engagement, and that's somebody you're gonna wanna work with. Next is actually create a community before you pitch it to them. They get pitched every single day, I guarantee you. My following's not that large and I still get hit up every single day from low quality emails, DMs, just from really bad pitches. Put in some effort, show that you're gonna put in effort before you reach out because they get pitches every single day. If they see that you've already put in work and that you're willing to put in work, they're more likely to work with you than somebody who's not put in any work yet because they're gonna feel like down the road, you're just gonna be lazy as a manager and not actually continue to put in work, which just means more work for them and they wasted their time and their audience by promoting something that's not gonna work in the back end. So make sure that you're putting in some effort before you even reach out to said individual or said influencer. The second on this list is through email outreach. First of all, start up an actual conversation. Don't just pitch them, here's the benefits of my group, would you like to join? That is gonna get ignored. Instead, what you need to do is have an actual conversation with them. Say, hey, I've achieved this, this, or this. Here is my proof. My question to you is, are you struggling with X, Y, or Z? Make sure it aligns with your niche and your community. And if they give you any sort of feedback, that is when you can start offering how you can help them out. Give them some value first, then invite them to your community. If it is a free group, awesome, send them the link right away. But if it's something that is paid, this is something you're gonna wanna warm up to before just straight up pitching your product. Nobody likes to get pitched to, especially if you have a following. If you suck at emails or outreach, make sure you grab the free templates that I created inside Modern Monetization, link in the description. The third thing is very classic, it is group hacking. You're gonna join a bunch of Facebook groups, you're gonna join other free school communities, post valuable content inside. Do not DM people, do not spam people, do not create posts asking people to join your community. You're gonna get kicked from that group so fast, I promise you. However, offering valuable information inside a community is welcome. You can do that inside my community. I welcome the value that you can provide. And if you help certain members in my community enough and you wanna DM them later down the road saying, hey, this is what I specialize in, I actually have my own community, feel free to reach out to them. But if you do things right, People will look on your profile and they will join your community without you having to ask. But on Facebook, that is when you're going to have to actually get people to convert over to that platform. That one's going to be a little bit harder. But again, value, value, value. Then you can DM and ask for something in return, which in this case would be to join your community. Now, if it's paid, that is when you would have to actually pitch them and tell them what they would get for that price. But that is a different game. Speaking of paid communities, if you are promoting a paid group, you need to have proof. Proof of concept. Make sure you can actually do what you say your community is about. If you don't have any proof, go get some. The easiest way to do that is by doing your work, what you offer for free first. All you ask for in return is for testimonials. Get a few testimonies from the first three to five people. After that, offer it at a discounted rate and continue to increase the price until you get to where you actually want. But don't start a paid community if you don't already have proof that it works. Another way you could do this is by offering a money back guarantee. I promise you I can get you these results in this amount of time or I'll give you your money back. Personally, I don't like the money back guarantee thing because a lot of people will then put in no effort knowing that they will get their money back when they get no results, meaning you didn't really make any progress. The only thing you will get out of that is a screenshot of them paying you, which sure, that could be proof or a testimonial kind of. Next, let's talk about if you actually have a social media presence. A lot of people are getting traffic right now through Instagram. So if you have an Instagram account, obviously you're making content, you're continuously getting flow of traffic. This is what you wanna do. Either A, have a link to your school group in the bio, just that, 
no link tree, no stand store where you have 10 different links. Make it simple and easy to find your link to your school group. The second thing is by implementing mini chat. This is a paid product, but the free version will get you started and you can test it out to see how it works. But it's very simple. All you have to do for mini chat is set up a simple automation. That way, anytime somebody comments a specific keyword on a post or a reel, it will auto reply to them in a DM, a specific link to your school group. You can obviously set it up a little bit more intricate than that, but the best way to set it up is by having it auto comment as well. That way it doubles your engagement and sometimes they will reply to that auto comment, making sure that they got the DM. Plus more people will likely have that same question and answering that in the thread, they're gonna see that and it's gonna increase the chance that they will convert as well. If you're on TikTok, do the exact same thing as Instagram. If you have a link in the bio, just send them to your school community. I can't tell you how many people are doing Linktree and Stand Stores having multiple links in their bio, nobody's clicking on those links. Just send them to one specific page, which should be your school community. Try collaborating with other TikTokers so that way you can get in front of their audience, not just yours. And please make sure you're putting a call to action in your video because most people are forgetting that step, which is simple call to action is if you want more information on this, click the link in the bio or link in the bio if you want to do the same thing, etc. I'm not going to go too crazy into call to actions. YouTube, I would do long form content, put the link in the description, not necessarily the bio of your YouTube channel, unless that is literally the only product you're trying to promote, then you can put it in the bio or the about of your YouTube channel. Otherwise, you can put this as the top link in any single description that you create on YouTube. YouTube Shorts is a different game and kind of bad, honestly, because you cannot put links in the comment section or in the description. So really all you can do is put a related video for one of your videos that actually has the links in the description or in the comment section of a long form video. So if you go that route, make sure you're posting content on your journey, results, and proof. The same can be done on LinkedIn or X. Just make sure that you're posting however you normally would post on the other social medias, just in text format on those social medias. However, don't spread yourself thin by trying to get on every single social media. Just pick one platform, whatever platform you're, that you're growing the most on. Just focus all in on that one platform. You'll go a lot further than trying to spread yourself thin on all the other social medias. Bonus, if you've never heard the term funnel hack, this is a popular strategy by going into somebody's social medias, their websites, and seeing how they're creating content, how they're getting traffic to their land pages to their websites, and then how they're actually going through the process by actually signing up through their product, their service, putting in your email and seeing the flow that goes through on their system. You can do the exact same thing with school. So here's how I do it. The first thing you're going to want to do is at the top right here, click on this drop down and click on discover communities. And this is going to let you see every single school group that is currently on here. Next, you're going to want to select the niche that you're currently in. Let's say we're in health and fitness, right? So these are all the top health and fitness basically groups. So I'm going to grab a couple of these, this one, this one, this one. All right. So I got a couple groups opened up. So what we're looking at here is their actual advertisements, which are these pages on the about section here, their copy, which is this right here, what is actually enticing people to join here. And then the real funnel hack is by looking at who created the group. So this one's by Nate Belmer. If we follow this right here. So he just has a link apparently leads to nothing, but Nate Belmer and his brother have a large following. So that's why obviously this group is so large. Let's move on to the next one here. We got Movement Gyms Elite, 13,000 members for 14 bucks a month. This is by Andrew. If we open up Andrew, oh, look at that. He's got Instagram and YouTube. Let's pull these open. All right, YouTube, 143,000 subscribers. So obviously he's posting content. Most of his content looks like it's been deleted. Maybe he's doing short form. Ah, okay. So this guy is focusing primarily on shorts. Like I said, there's no links in shorts. So it's only way to find this is the link in the bio. So people have to actually be on their computer or that's what I thought. Instagram, 240,000. He's only got a link to his school group. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You need to have the link in the bio in your social media. Let's check out another one here. 120 members, nine bucks a month for Gregory. Let's check out Gregory. Boom, boom. He's got a YouTube channel. 1,000 subscribers right here. Instagram, 7,000. So literally just follow this strategy. Peep their Instagrams, peep their social medias. Eddie right here, I know he's got a large following. 3.7 million on Instagram. So this guy has a large following, but he's making a severe mistake, stand store. So this is why his community is not growing as much is because he has all these extra products in here. If you are trying to make a lot of money through school or grow your school community, you cannot do this. It literally needs to be a link. The only link, the only option is right to your school community. Now let's talk about once you actually have a school community open and active, this is what you should do to make sure that your free community is actually engaged and 
you're not just getting a bunch of bots in there. You want actual engaged, real people in your community. The first thing that I do is turning on auto DMs. Inside my auto DMs, I generally just welcome them to the community and I make sure that I send them a link to a post, a welcome post that breaks down the rules and anything that they need to follow inside the community. I also mentioned, hey, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or my community manager, which right now it is just me. But if you have a manager, a large following or a large group, you'll definitely want to have a couple moderators and managers. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get to every single DM. On top of auto DMs, I also require members to answer three questions before they hop in. A, this proves that they're a real person. B, no bots can just auto spam to join free groups. And C, it gives me some information about them. I'm not sure if you're a beginner inside my school community or if you're more advanced. So that way I'm not giving you beginner tactics to somebody who's been doing this for a long time. Or if you are a beginner, I'm not giving you this high level strategy stuff that you're not going to understand at all what to do with. Plus, having these three questions allows me to vet people before they join my community. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I get requests every single day to join my free community, and most people I turn away because either A, they're a bot, or B, they're a low-value, low-quality person that is just looking for free information and then moving on. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Membership. He answered the three questions that I have. Here's his bio. Do you have experience online? He's experienced. He's made over 5,000. He wants more knowledge on how to scale his school community. Do you have a following? Not much. Okay. Then I actually click on their profile. Now look at this. Hmm. They're a part of 30 groups, 30 different communities. Of those 30 communities, he's only made five contributions ever. That means maybe he's made one post in five of these communities. Now, do you want somebody who's actually going to engage in your community or somebody who's just going to consume and then move on? Because the way the school rankings work for discovery is based off engagement. If you have a bunch of people like this who join your community and do nothing but just consume and then leave, it actually hurts the quality of your community. So it all depends on how you're trying to grow your community. Speaking of engagement, that is actually what's up next is actively engage inside your community. You can't just start funneling people into your community and not reply, not create posts, not engage with them. You can easily add engagement by adding events to the calendar, doing live workshops, or at the very least, put a post once, twice, three times a week that is actually engaging and value driven. Another great tip large communities are doing are they're implementing moderators and managers that continuously create posts. They continuously DM people and make sure that they're staying active in the community, answering questions and making sure that they're getting their questions answered in a timely manner. They're not waiting 24 plus hours to get a response. They only have to wait an hour at max. School hasn't implemented this yet, but I know affiliates are coming to school where you can have other people promote your community. They can get paid for it, but you can do it right now by offering people an opportunity to grow your community. You could do a competition by allowing whoever gets the most people invited into my community this month is going to win a thousand dollars, or they're going to get this prize. They're going to get a free coaching package, free one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it might be. Offer incentives to your current community to get people inside, whether that be people they know in real life, their Facebook groups, Facebook DMs, social media DMs, or in other school communities. But again, make sure that you're telling them not to do bad practices by creating posts and DMing people because that's where bad things can happen real quick. And number 10 can be effective in both paid and free communities is by offering deadlines. If it's a free community, say this group is only free by this date or it's only free by this amount of members. Or if you have a paid community, it's staying at this price point and the price is going up by this deadline or we only have capacity for this amount of people. Bonuses is a great way to get people in, but make sure they are a limited bonus. If you join right now, if you join before the end of this month, if you join before we get to 100 members, you will get a bonus XYZ. Free one-on-ones with me, you'll get an extra template package, whatever it might be, offer bonuses. That's how most people who do affiliate marketing make most of their money. Instead of clicking on their link, if you click on my link, I'll give you X, Y, and Z for free. Now, obviously you can use paid traffic on YouTube or Facebook, but for the most part, unless you have a high price point for your community or a really good LTV for your group, it's really not worth it in the long run currently to promote through paid ads. It's possible, but you still have to have a really good structure. You have to create good ads. And obviously the price point needs to be to the point where you're breaking even, or again, lifetime value of the customer needs to exceed the cost that it costs you to acquire that new customer. Look, we're just scratching the surface here. If you're interested in starting your own school community, click my affiliate link down below and shoot me a DM. And I will have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, helping you come up with a game plan for your community, how to grow it, how to get members and how to make it more engaging. So that way it doesn't die off within the first month or two and you can actually get a positive ROI 
on your investment for school. If you're still on the fence, just remember you get a 14 day free trial so you don't get charged at all until after 14 days. And if you wanna know how I was able to grow our first school community from zero to $300,000 our very first year, mind you, this was before we even had payment in house, check out the link right here. I created a full masterclass, exactly what we did step-by-step step, so you can replicate the same system, the same model that we followed to get that community up and going and profitable right away.